Today we are doing lesson 11.1, relate angles and fractional parts of a circle. <clears throat> Our essential question says, how can you relate angles and fractional parts of a circle? Um, a says, place one, a 112 piece on the circle. So this is a 112 piece. We've already drawn all of ours on the circle. Um, place the tip of the fraction piece on the center of the circle. Trace the fraction piece to create an angle. What part of the fraction piece represents the rays of the angle? So, what are these? Well, mine. Triangle. Begins with an S. Sides. The sides, okay? So, what part of the fraction piece represents the rays of the angle? The sides. Where is the vertex of the angle? So, where is the pointy part on your circle? All the way around, where's the pointy part? In the center, okay? In the center of the circle. In the center of the circle. Okay. Um, to shade the angle found by the 112 piece. <coughs> label it 112. So I'm just going to shade one of these pieces and label it 112. It says place the 112 piece back on the shaded angle, turn it counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is the direction opposite from the way the hands on the clock move. Trace the fraction piece in its new position. How many 12 can be traced in all? So we chase two. And it does say counter, but we did clockwise, it's fine. Okay. Daniel's the only one that did it right. Okay. Um, I also did counterclockwise. All right. Shh. Turn the fraction piece counterclockwise again and trace it. And so we would just be turning it and tracing it. So 3 12, 4 12, 5 12, 6 12, 7 12, 8 12. 9, 12, you guys did this part already, 10, 12, 11, 12, and of course, last, 12, 12. So, how many times did you need to turn the 1, 12 piece to make a circle? Olivia? 12. 12. How many angles come together in the center of the circle? How many? Twelve. Okay. Next page. Okay. Compare the size of the angle formed by a one-fourth piece and the size of the angle formed by a one-twelfth piece. Use a one-fourth piece in your model to help you. Okay. So here's a one-fourth piece, the yellow. Here's a 1 12th piece. How many 12ths does it take to equal 1 4th? Three. Three. Okay, so that's what we're going to write down. The 1 4th piece is three times bigger. Circle for the 112th piece. 12. How 
how many times then would you have to turn the one-fourth to make a circle? Four. So that's what we're going to put. The smaller the fraction piece, the more turns it takes to make a circle. The smaller the fraction piece, the more turns it takes to make a circle. Write that down. The smaller the fraction piece, the more turns it takes to make a circle. The more turns it takes. turn, right? So is that a one-fourth of the clock would be shaded? Yes. Okay. Um, so in 15 minutes, you um, if you start here and you go 15 minutes, it makes a one-fourth or a quarter turn. Okay. If you go 30 minutes, what fraction of the clock are you go have you gone through? Okay, what about if you go 45 minutes? Three fourths, and then um, one whole would be one whole. <clears throat> I know, so that's why I keep going back because I um, this clock, the red hand automatically moves when the blue hand does, just like a real clock. Okay, really? Yep. All right, so here we go. Um, you guys know the way that the clock hands move this way, right? Mm -hmm. So that's called clockwise. And then counterclockwise is the opposite way. So you have to often think about, okay, is that the way that the clock's hands move? Yes. Is that the way? No. Okay. So let's look at these. After 15 minutes, the, the minute hand makes a blank turn clockwise. <clears throat> so after 15 minutes, it has made a one-fourth turn oh, clockwise. This worked much better earlier this morning. I think my clock hand's getting worn out. It doesn't want to stay. It doesn't want to stay. Do you want me to do it? That's okay. So one fourth. Yes, Olivia. I noticed that it's number 12. So it's like one twelve, two twelve, three twelves, and so on. Exactly right. That's a great um, uh, connection. You're exactly right. So basically um, each one of those sections would represent one of our 12 size parts. You're exactly right. Okay, so 15 minutes, the minute hand makes a one-fourth turn clockwise. 30 minutes, um, the minute hand makes a one-half turn clockwise. Or how many fourths? Two, two, two fourths. What if we 
we're doing um, the 12 size parts. Six twelve. Very good. Okay. Next. Part of the interruption, students and teachers, please be aware that Mr. Jones's 1.30 class is also canceled. Okay. Thank you. 45 minutes. The minute hand makes a how much of a turn? So here's one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. Three. So 45 minutes is a three fourths turn. And 60 minutes would be one full turn clockwise. So one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, or one whole. Okay. This is kind of what you guys are going to be doing for your lesson today. It says, tell what fraction of the circle the shaded angle represents. So, um, grab your binder, I'll be in your paper and your mailbox. So, what part is shaded on number one, Landon? Well, one half. One half, very good. So, that would be Landon, okay. Um, what about number two, Riley? Very good. Okay. What about number three? They probably won't fit, honey. You can just stick them in there. Um, Kaden, what fraction is represented the shade apart on number three? So if each one of these is one fourth, what do you think it could be? Let me draw some lines to help you, Kaden. Now can you tell what fraction is shaded? No, how much is shaded? How many are shaded? Three out of how many? Three fourths. Does that make sense? Okay. Don't let the fact that it's scooted over a little bit confuse you. It's still three of these sections, right? Okay. Um, next, linen. And they got one hole. One hole, yep. So we're just going to write one. Um, then for number five, Laney, what fraction is shaded? Huh? Yep. Who said one hole? Linen? be getting it a call at all if you do that again. I will take your stick out and you won't be able to get pulled. So this one's a tough one, Cooper. So think about think about the clock again. So if you if it goes that far, what what fraction did it go? Is, is it that much? That's one four. Remember what we first did on the first page. What numbers did you write down on the very first page? Charlotte? No, not one half. 
112. 112. 112, right, I Cooper? Have one anyway. So, Cooper, remember there's 12 sections, and we split it up into um, 12 size parts. So, each one of those angles are 12. Um, and I'll go, so if you look, like one of these is that wide, okay? So we know that because how many sections are we, did we break it into? 12, and there's 12 big red numbers on here. So that means each one of these numbers represents one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, and so on. Does that make sense? Okay, um, so this would be one twelfth. Okay. All right. Tell whether the angle on the sh circle shows one fourth, one half, three fourths, or one full turn. So these are our options, guys. If it's showing this much shaded or this much of an opening, how much is that? One fourth. Your other option is, of course, one half. Three fourths looks like this yellow part. Three fourths or one whole. So, clockwise goes like this. This is CW for clockwise. Counterclockwise, CCW goes like that. Okay? What? I thought it was C T W. Gabe. Okay. Olivia, it's for counter clockwise. Okay. Um, all right. So the only word we're adding in front of clockwise is counter. Okay. Um, so number seven. Tell me what fraction that turn is and whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise, Gabe. What? Brody, what fraction of a turn is that? One fourth. And are they going clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. Nice job. One fourth, and then we're going to write CCW for counterclockwise. Okay. Next, Livia. Number eight. Uh, it would be one half going clockwise. Very good, yes. One half clockwise. Okay. Next, Annie. because you see that the opening is just one fourth but if the opening is one fourth then it travels this far to get to be a one fourth so it had to travel three fourths to get to one fourth okay Susan watched the game from 1 p.m. to 1 30 so here is Susan's game she started at 1 p.m. and she stopped at 1 30. Um, describe the turn the minute hand made. So this is our minute hand, the blue one. So describe the turn the blue hand made. Okay, I'm going to pull a stick. Linda. Uh huh. And did it go clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise, good work. One half clockwise, okay. And then the last one says compare the angles in 
exercises one and five. Does the angle affect the, the angle? Does the position of the angle affect the size of the angle? So we're looking, guys, at number one and number five. Both of those represent what fraction? One half. And they're asking, does it matter that one of the halves is sideways and the other one is like this? Does that matter? No. No, it does not. It's still one half. Exactly right. So what we're going to write down on that one is go. no. Both angles represent half of the circle. No, both angles. represent half of the circle. What you're going to do on your own after you finish copying that down is the last page. Um, I'm going to give you just a couple of quick instructions. If you didn't finish copying this down, I'll flip back to it in one second. Let me just show you on your assignment page. Lots of kids had questions on number seven and eight. Number seven says Shelly exercise for 15 minutes. Describe the turn the minute hand made. So basically, it went from right here to right here. So what kind of turn would that be? Don't answer that. This is on your own. And then uh, number eight says, give a description of the three-fourths turn of the minute hand on the clock face. So I want to know how many minutes. will pass if it makes a three-fourths of a turn. So if your minute hand starts here and ends up here, how many minutes pass? Don't, don't answer that out loud. Okay, you guys can go ahead and get this. When you get finished, raise your hand and I will come and check it.